Britain and the EU have given themselves until Sunday to decide if their Brexit negotiations are worth continuing. A three-hour dinner on Wednesday, seen as a last-ditch attempt, failed to bring the two sides any closer to a trade deal. The British Prime Minister travelled to Brussels after an earlier phone call between him and the EU chief failed to break the deadlock. Disagreements over fishing rights, business competition rules and policing are keeping the parties from hashing out a trade deal. With the Brexit transition period expiring on December 31st, fears of a chaotic split are growing. On Wednesday, Boris Johnson told the British Parliament he thinks there is, quote, a good deal still there to be done. However, he went on to say that he would not accept an agreement at any cost. I must tell the House that our friends are currently, our friends in the EU, are currently insisting that uh, if they pass a new law in the future uh, with which we in this country do not comply or don't follow suit, then they want the automatic right, uh, Mr Speaker, to, to punish us and uh, to retaliate. And secondly, they're saying that the UK should be the only country in the world not to have sovereign control over its fishing waters. And I don't believe, Mr Speaker, that those are terms that any Prime Minister of this country uh, should accept. Let's go now to our correspondent, Birgit Maas, in London. Birgit, the two met for dinner. It was billed as a chance for them to try and reach a breakthrough, but it certainly appears not to have worked out that way. No, it doesn't look like we've had a jolly get-together with love and reconciliation. The mood is pretty downbeat, and, and you've had Boris Johnson. It's really too principles that are really opposed, which explains um, why it's so difficult to, to, to breach that remaining gap. It's on one hand, it's the issue of sovereignty for the UK. You might ask, or the, the people who fought for Brexit might ask, what is the point of Brexit if we then really tie ourselves very closely to the EU, as they would see it? And on the EU side, it's the fear that they have a competitor on their doorstep with a lot of access to their single market, but who might in future somehow undercut them. And these are two core principles, and they are opposed. And it's at the moment very, very difficult, apparently, to, to find a way and to find a compromise. Well, none of this sounds very promising. So I have to ask you, are, are the two sides just delaying the inevitable? Um, that we have to see, because obviously they always maintain that it would be the, in everyone's interest to have a trade deal. It would be in the interest of, of businesses in the EU and very much so in the UK. However, Boris Johnson, if we just look at him, he's also under pressure from many of his backbenchers who have fought for Brexit, the Conservative Party, um, the MPs in Parliament, many are, have very strong views about it and they say he's toast and I'm citing that if he gives in to the European Union too much. Now, the UK is leaving the transition period at the end of the year, so it really is uh, crunch time, it's only three more weeks and they have set themselves another deadline which is Sunday. And then they say they really want to make a decision. If they haven't been able to overcome the gaps until Sunday, then they say they're going to end the talks. This is what they say now. But of course, they have been delaying and delaying because both sides still hope that they will be able to find an agreement. Birgit, we only have about 30 seconds, but I'm curious, is there any appetite for a no-deal Brexit in the UK? Business leaders are really imploring Boris Johnson uh, to, to, to find a solution. They know it's going to be incredibly painful. Britain is going to be hit with tariffs. If you look at the car industry, for example, experts are fearing that could be wiped out the mass car production in the UK. So a lot is at stake here for the UK. Birgit Maas in London for us. Thank you so much, Birgit. Well, Chancellor Angela Merkel has told German MPs that the European Union is willing to accept a no-deal outcome if no agreement can be secured. There still remains the chance of a deal. I don't think we will know by tomorrow whether we have succeeded or not. That I can't promise. But we are working on it. 
We are, however, prepared for a scenario in which we cannot accept the conditions. If there are British conditions which we cannot accept, then we will take the path of no deal. One thing is absolutely clear, the integrity of the EU single market must be preserved. Well, let's bring in our reporter Daniel Winter on this. Daniel, how significant is what Chancellor Merkel saying there? Well, it's not quite explosive. It's more the drip, drip, drip of water torture on the UK government. The pressure is building on them now to do something and to change their stance. But the thing is, what Angela Merkel is talking about is the so-called level playing field principle. So what's stopping the UK just pouring its money into a particular industry or company and then bouncing out the competition inside the EU, taking advantage of that free market access? Well, that's what the EU doesn't want. And so the difficulty is, though, of course, the EU is accustomed to pushing negotiations to as late as possible. But British businesses are under pressure right now because they've only got three weeks to get everything together and they don't know what's happening. Yeah, and this really couldn't be coming at a, a worse time, could it? Yes, apart from all of this getting ready for Brexit, British ports are suffering right now. There's a huge bottleneck there at the moment. Now, they're saying this is due to, you know, the coronavirus, also the Christmas rush, but getting their customs checks into, um, into order before the end of the transition period. So the likes of Honda in the UK say that they're pausing production because they can't get all of the parts that they need to carry out their business as normal. And this is all due to these uh, ports having difficulties right now. But beyond that, supermarkets like Tesco, let's say, have said that prices will likely rise in the event of a no-deal Brexit and they are already stockpiling, along with many other British businesses. So the pressure really is on right now. Yeah, and, and just briefly, if you can, are we any closer to understanding what a no-deal Brexit is going to look like? Well, it's going to be um, huge hugely problematic and disruptive for all kinds of industries. So we're going to see, of course, tariffs applied to a lot of things like foodstuffs, which is why Tesco is going to have to increase its prices. Um, Toyota, the car company, on top of Honda as well, says that their factories will not be competitive if there is a no-deal Brexit. So, of course, it's going to hugely change certain business models, change industries, until a deal can be found. So if a no-deal Brexit happens, then there is the wait is there going to be after that any further negotiations, any continuation, or is that going to be it? Is the UK going to be trading on WTO terms, World Trade Organization terms, with all the tariffs that implies with its closest trading neighbour? That would be hugely problematic for the British economy at a time when it needs to recover from the coronavirus crisis. Feels like we've been saying it for ages, but the clock really is ticking, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Daniel Winter, thanks for joining us.